So it's winter in Scotland and we've got a couple of really cold nights coming up, which last year started to freeze our water tanks, which is our drinking water, it's our shower water, it's just all of our water that we have. So I'm going to try and do some things in this video that's going to prevent that from freezing. It's a lovely day to do it, isn't it? So I've got a two pronged attack with this. First is we're gonna try and insulate these. Um, I had a look at how much the actual insulation jackets you can buy for these are, the ones that you wrap around each individual drum, and they are so expensive. I thought they might be, you know, a few quid, but <laughs> way above what I'm willing to spend, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to insulate a whole sort of cupboard shed thing to try and keep them all a reasonable temperature. That also gives me the added benefit that I can, in the future, once Amazon decides to deliver it, I can add a little heater to in here, not in the water tank, inside the shed just to keep the ambient temperature a little bit higher than, um, than the outside temperature. And the second attack is going to be um, keeping all of the water moving in these tanks, because when it arrives, um, you know, it just sits until we use some. So we'll go through exactly how we're gonna do that afterwards, but first we need to cut some materials. And thankfully, I kept a lot of old timber when we pulled the barn down. So we'll go and have a look at that and see if we can find a few pieces we can salvage. When we build the house, these are all going to go inside, so that's why I'm keen to use up old timber rather than, you know, spending the money and making this all really nice. Although this is pretty nice timber anyway, it's not as bad as some of the others. So this is only gonna last us a couple of years while we get the house together, but only we've got one, two, three, four. I think we've got enough there to do this. So chop it up, get the frame ready. Believe it or not, there was actually a stage where the workshop was reasonably tidy. It didn't seem to last very long. And if it doesn't look too bad from where you are there, have a look at this. So where possible, you want to be building to the sheet dimensions. And I'll go through in a minute why that's not always as straightforward as it might seem. Oh, we're really close already. So 2.4, I'm gonna double check the frame because obviously when you have the corners, not every corner is gonna be 2.4. Right, so just have a look at this. So these sheets are 2.4 by 1.2, or so they're advertised. And they used to be eight foot by four foot, but you've got to be careful because some of the sheets, this one, for example, is actually 2.4 by 1.2. And I've just checked the OSB behind and it, it is also 2.4 by 1.2. But sometimes, like in cases of plasterboard, you actually get a 2.44 by 1.22. So it's not the same. So if you go and build it so that all of your seams are bang on 60 centimetres, 1.2 and 2.4, um, you'll find the 1.22 and the 2.44 don't actually line up. So you just have to be careful. Just check that all of the sheets that you're going to be using on all of your layers are actually 1.2 by 2.4 or not, they're the other one, so that you get all your studs and your framing behind it in the right order with the right measurements. Before we go with too much more, we should probably start with the second stage of our attack on the freeze and that's going to be keeping the water moving. So I'm going to drill this hole here and then I'll take you inside and explain roughly what we're trying to achieve here, why I'm choosing to drill it where I'm going to drill it, but we'll get out the rain and we'll just get this done. So I'm using this rag here just to put on the inside to catch any of the plastic that's coming off on the inside. Okay, excellent. Right, so what are we trying to achieve here? We've got the incoming water, comes from all the way up the hill, comes in here. Before, we had a T, which teed before we got into here, and that flowed the water back to the river, meaning that we always had moving water 
on the incoming side, but it meant that the actual water inside the barrels were never flowing unless you had something in the caravan actually pulling water, which during the night meant that it was um, starting to freeze. So the solution to that is we're going to take the drainage or the, the end of the flow from the fourth barrel. So it comes in one, two, three, four. And then if we take it from here to the river, then we've got constant water flow through all four. Now the mistake I nearly made was I was going to drain it from the bottom here, which is one of our drainage points. However, if anything happened to the intake water, if it froze, if it blocked, but the outgoing water was still flowing, which is fairly likely because there's very little to go wrong with that, we would drain all of the water and we'd end up with nothing and no incoming. So that was going to be a bit of a problem. So I um, decided to take it from the top, which means that if anything happens, the water still flows because this is lower than the intake water. But if anything goes wrong, we're only going to lose the difference in height between here and here. We're still going to have the rest of the water left in the four tanks, which will give me a bit of time to try and fix whatever problem we've got. So then we'll get into the workshop, start connecting up all of these plumbing fittings, and then we'll get back on with the structure. Right, so these tank connectors are supposed to be fine to use, but I found that they all dripped very slowly. I don't know whether that's because of the temperature or what, but the solution to that was to glue it. Now, I've never really got on well with these epoxy glues because they drip, they clog, they mix. So I grabbed these packs of um, epoxy from Amazon, super cheap, and I've got on really, really well with these. So we're going to mix up a little bit. I have already done these on the other connectors because I redid them all, which is why I know it works. But you're just going to use a little bit like that in one tube and then a little bit of this from the other tube and it just... You don't get them mixed up, you can keep them separate, the glues don't, and it's way cheaper. Super smelly though, because this stuff, I think it was, it was the cheapest of cheap, so I'm pretty sure it's the most vicious of vicious. You know, I don't think they pay too much attention to your well-being when they make this stuff. And then I just put, get it mixed up, put a bit on both sides of these rubber. I think it's probably because the tanks are slightly curved. Um, these are kind of for, like it's a tank connector, supposedly for square ones. So just get one side glued up. Don't need much, I just need to take the slack out. And then I stick that to that side like that. And then get the other side glued, which is gonna go on the tank itself. Right, that's that. Now let's go and get that on the tank. So I've already been and dried the inside of this. So the rubber's going on the inside. I'm just threading that on. And I'm not gonna tie it too tightly because the epoxy is gonna do the bonding for me on the inside and I don't wanna crack that. So I'm just kinda tightening that up, finger tight. This is where our pipe's gonna go. I'm gonna leave that to dry, which is why we've jumped to this job instead of finishing off the structure. So I've just turned the water on just to make sure that it does actually come out the other end because the concrete's not all that level here. But I also want to get the pipes in because you see this is the side that I'm building up now. So I just want to test it all before we seal it all away. Got our sleeves on the pipes. That's
So I started to cut the timber frame and realized it probably wasn't necessary. I thought it would probably just get away with the structure as it is. So I've used these angle brackets to tie all the corners together, to tie the front edges together. This board's a bit curved because it's been sitting against the wall for a few weeks. So that'll settle out after it's got a bit of time to, to sit. Um, but yeah, it's turned out all right. I've made sure that it slopes off to that side so that any drips go off into the water. And then I'm going to be adding some roofing felt over the next couple of weeks once I get a hold of some, just so that the top doesn't get soaking wet. And I've added the bitumen to the bottom so that, you know, it just protects the ply a little bit. So there's that. I um, only ended up having to cut one sheet. So this front sheet of um, OSB, I just cut because it's a bit narrower, but that was the only piece, uh, only piece I had to trim. So it's always easier if you build to the sheets, like I said earlier. I did have to cut the foam so that we could fit it to the full sheets, but I just cut that off the top so that the top foam could sit in and then cut the edges off. So if you plan it ahead of time and you haven't got some predetermined measurements to work to, it can actually be quite a quick and easy job. Last thing we've got to do is just add this 90 degree bend to our drainage pipe and then go down to the river and just check it is actually draining or flowing through the system into the river. And we're good for the freeze. Always keep your electrical tape warm. Otherwise it will just snap on you. And it's got much higher insulation properties if the color of the electrical tape matches your plumbing color scheme. So it hasn't started coming through yet. Oh, there we go. It was bubbling. God, that's quite a good flow, isn't it? It was bubbling away, so I knew there was something coming out because I could see the air pushing its way out. One thing I'm going to have to make sure is that this is submerged under the under the river so that you know the end doesn't freeze up. But that's okay. So there we go. Don't know if it's going to work till it works or till it doesn't. The next video is probably going to be version two of the micro hydro. We've got some upgrades planned, testing it for a year or two. We've, um, we've worked our way through to some solution. Can you hear it bubbling away? Getting all the air out of the pipe, I suppose. I'm gonna lift that up. So yeah, the next video is gonna be Hydro Mark, let's say 1.5, because it's not our full update, but we're gonna be um, making some changes. So if you'd like to come see that, come join us, be nice to have you here, and we'll see you then.